Welcome to the June 6, 2022 Advanced Report from McGowan Group clients and NetworthRadio.com listeners. I'm Spencer McGowan, your financial weatherman, with your weekly fast-paced tour of the global financial markets. These videos, we're, it's proof that we love our clients at McGowan Group Asset Management, a team of 10 that cares. We, every week, prepare a short broadcast. Be sure to subscribe. We also do the Apple Podcast under NetworthRadio.com. But this is proof that we do love our clients and we want them to make great decisions. Information empowers you. Headlines likely are just going to cause anxiety. So we're going to dissect a lot of the headlines, the market impacts, and what to look for over the summer. This week's Apple Podcast titled June, July, and August, what's ahead for the financial markets? What are the key dates? And we're gonna cover those and the market impact as we build in, yes, what the Fed is doing. Inflation, what is disinflation? That's when the inflation rate comes down. And we're starting to see signs that that could happen, but I'm also gonna show you where it's not happening and what to look for to say, okay, you get an all clear in terms of the inflation numbers. And that would be disinflation, likely to occur at some point over the next few months. And I'll show you some of the reasons why. Okay, Dow Jones Industrial Average. This week, I did the two-year Dow Jones Industrial Average. And the reason I wanted to go from, uh, you know, the final part of the meltdown in 20, through today and you can see the Dow at 25,000 June two years ago. You see the big recovery rally. The Fed infused five trillion dollars uh, into the system and you see a peak along about November and then another peak here as we entered the year. And since that peak, the Dow down about 13, 14 percent. Uh, the NASDAQ's down 23%. The tech stocks have led the way down as liquidity, uh, anticipating liquidity would dry up. In fact, this is where the Fed said, we are gonna do something about inflation, we're gonna make it more expensive to borrow, and we're gonna try to cool off the economy. And you can see the impact here. What's this date? This date in May is when the Federal Reserve indicated that they're going to accelerate the schedule raising the cost of money, the overnight bank lending rate corresponding to T-bills and money markets eventually. Well, you could see the drama this year. That is uh, the 20, 2022 correction is what we'll call it. And everybody wants to know, is it over? Well, we've got two key dates coming up. There is June 15th and July 27th. That's when the Federal Reserve is forecast to raise the rates by another half a percent and then on up to July 27th. That means they reached the target that they spelled out in July instead of at the end of the year. At that point, if they say we're going to wait and see, then you take a lot of the anxiety out of the market. Right now, they're, they're starting to dial back the $5 trillion that they printed at just $50 billion a month. Now, is that having an impact on the housing inventory yet? Days on the market, you can see a record low still, but those numbers are actually January, February. So that's not an indicator of what's happening right now. We're seeing signs that the housing market by the way, the price of your home in North Texas up over 30% through the end of March over the prior year. Congratulations, that's not only record territory, but we may have seen peak in housing prices. Inventory will tell us when that happens. So this will be an important indicator, but notice the housing numbers don't come out for a while. We go to the Realtors Association, by the way, and they're a great source of information on what's actually happening. This is that NASDAQ correction, the peak in tech stocks November. What else peaked in November? Crypto. Crypto was worth $3 trillion. Now it's worth about $1.2 trillion. Bitcoin falling back below $30,000. You see that excess liquidity, a lot of it went to crypto saying, man, when there's inflation, that's where you want to be. Well, no, the market has lost $1.8 trillion since this peak. 
The stock market has lost about $10 trillion since that peak. So what you can see here uh, is the NASDAQ correction, the top 100 companies there. That's multiple contraction. Growth is slowing down and the multiples come down and the pricing of the companies. But with this correction, there are bargains in the market and we'll cover where some of those bargains are. This is the top 10 and bottom 10 performers in the S&P 500 over the past 90 days. Exactly the kind of research you would expect your investment team to be doing on a weekly basis. And you can see the theme here. Uh, the underpriced companies were energy based upon current earnings is still underpriced relative to the S&P. Uh, Devon Energy, Constellation, Marathon, uh, and so Occidental Petroleum, one of the top performers, up 46% for the year. Valero Energy, up 61%. Those, those are the 90-day numbers. And what's getting clobbered? Under Armour, uh, 33, that's the multiple collapse. Caesars, Penn National Gaming, with the gaming companies getting wiped out because liquidity is being dialed back. You can see the theme there. Netflix, uh, their multiple contraction, it's been brutal. Uh, Netflix being one of the FANG stocks, and that centers on a lot of these. Black & Decker's kind of a mystery. Why are they down 30%? But this is the kind of research that helps you make great decisions. These are posted, by the way, at NetworthRadio.com, charts and graphs. Now, you've heard of the food supply and food shortages, okay? You can see it here uh, in the price of wheat spiking uh, and making an all-time new high. Since that time, though, you're, you're seeing that price moderate uh, from uh, 1400 uh, down to currently about 1000 So you've had a pretty significant decrease in the price of both corn and wheat. Is that going to create disinflation? I'll tell you what it's not. It is not spiraling out of control, and it doesn't indicate that the dreaded shortages are actually here. It's just that the prices are higher. Now, the energy sector, you can see huge gains in energy. This is more than a triple from the lows of 2020. And part of that was, what are those assets really worth? That's the type of question when you construct a portfolio. Right now, of course, energy, the medical dividend companies leading the way with gains year to date. Uh, and then global high yield is starting to look interesting as bonds actually are priced below 80% of par value in the baskets. So it's, you have to estimate that, uh, but it is a good indicator because bonds tend to drift back to par when the Fed pressure is at least paused. And that's what we're looking for over the summer. The jobs report said 390,000 net new jobs in May. What is that? That is not a recession. It may be slowing down, but it's not a recession. That'll be the key number that we cover here over the summer as well for an indication of what we should do with our tactical safety and where we may want to protect. The two-year treasury is paying 2.5%, and for the ultra-conservative investor or the ultra-conservative part of a portfolio, uh, that's a pretty generous rate uh, in something that is just two years in duration. I'm Spencer McGowan, President, McGowan Group Asset Management, your financial weatherman. Go to NetworthRadio.com, fill out your preliminary client questionnaire, and we will update your plan for the inflation cycle of 2022. Thank you for tuning in to Net Worth Media today. And our efforts over the past two decades to educate clients and help clients make great decisions, that's the reason that we're here at YouTube McGowan Group, Apple Podcasts, Net Worth Radio, and NetworthRadio.com. The Net Worth Media effort is designed to help you make great decisions and address 
value at risk of loss, fluctuation in the markets. Remember, if we talk about a security, doesn't make it a recommendation until you come down and get a plan from McGowan Group Asset Management, the team that cares. You can set a Zoom meeting or an in-office meeting at the Crescent and we'll give you a written plan that encompasses what we believe to be the best allocations. This is a team of 10 devoted to you. That includes the research that you see each week from Reuters, from Bloomberg, and from the best sources. We always post links at networthradio.com for what we believe can help you make great decisions, the research that comes up. Now, the net worth media effort is also designed to address cycles in the market, value at risk of loss. At networthradio.com, you can get the ADV form that shows, yes, we're a fiduciary, a registered investment advisor. It covers the costs of hiring our team to help you in the future ahead. It really helps to have an expert team on your side that you can reach by phone, email, and of course, a team that's here for you every week to address what's going on in the markets because anxiety can often lead investors to make decisions that are either dangerous chasing things or selling things when they shouldn't. And that's a big part of our planning effort at McGowan Group Asset Management. Thank you for tuning in and we look forward to serving you and your family in the years ahead.